More than half of Sweden's surface area of 41 million hectares is productive forest land. Forest growth in Sweden totals 130 million forest cubic meters each year, but we harvest only 90 million. The remaining 30% is set aside for nature conservation purposes, self-thinning, and a small area is saved to increase the forest stock. The volume of branches and tops from the trees that can be harvested annually in Sweden has an energy content equivalent to about 60 terawatt hours. But, due to nature conservation considerations and economic and technological reasons, only about 30 terawatt hours can be extracted. Today, forest owners only use branches and tops from half of the available area. Of the roughly 15 terawatt hours remaining, only about 8 terawatt hours is delivered using current technology to thermal power stations and similar facilities. The rest is left in the forest between piles of brush, under piles of brush and under stacks of logs. This means that less than 15% or one-eighth of the forest's potential energy resource is used today. There is therefore an opportunity to increase the extraction of energy from the forest simply by using more efficient working methods and by opting to use branches and tops from more regeneration harvesting sites. The branches and tops we incinerate can supply heating and electricity to the equivalent of the counties of Kalmar and Blekinge. If we were to use the full potential of 60 terawatt hours, it could supply heating and electricity to the whole of south and central Sweden. Branches and treetops, which have previously been viewed as logging waste, can now be used as fuel, mainly in cogeneration plants and in the future also as vehicle fuel. Branches and tops are primarily extracted during regeneration harvesting. This is almost entirely through the use of machinery. Various types of harvesters fell the trees and trim and cut the trunks for timber and pulpwood. A forwarder drives harvested timber and pulpwood to a roadway where it is picked up by timber trucks for transport directly to sawmills and pulp mills. In some cases, branches and tops are removed immediately, though this is usually left in the harvested area for a summer to dry before being moved to a roadway. The branches and tops are left there in covered piles while waiting for chipping. During the autumn, when heating demand increases, the branches and tops are chipped. This can be carried out by chippers fitted to a forwarder. The chips are emptied into truck containers and driven directly to a thermal power station where they are weighed and the moisture content of the fuel is also registered. When this is complete, the chips are emptied into the power station's fuel storage facility. One alternative to a chipper fitted to a forwarder is a truck equipped with a chipper. These are suitable for smaller projects but require better roads and careful planning of how the piles of branches and tops are created. An increase in the extraction of renewable energy is not only better for forest owners, but also for society at large. There are many different ways to work during regeneration harvesting. The working approach is different for a harvester with a front-mounted crane compared with a side-mounted crane. Furthermore, almost every machine operator has his or her own working methods. When harvesting, the machine operator decides whether the timber and branches and tops should be to the left or the right of the strip road, or if the branches and tops should be spread on the strip road to reduce the risk of soil damage. 
This depends on the terrain and how the trees stand in relation to each other. For machines with side-mounted cranes, it is natural to place the pile on the same side as the crane or in front of the machine. The harvester head is positioned at the root of the tree to be felled. The cut tree is pulled to the location where the operator wants to place the wood and the branches and tops. The tree is then pulled through the head's delimbing tool where branches are removed from the trunk. When the desired trunk length is reached, it is cut. The first logs are usually for timber and the remainder some form of saw logs. Closest to the top is used for pulpwood and in some cases wood fuel. If part of the trunk is very decayed or extremely twisted, it can also be used as wood fuel. Treetops are not delimbed but instead placed on the branches and tops pile. The harvester operator also strives to place each different type of wood in separate piles. This is to facilitate for the forwarder driver. When working with branches and tops, the aim is to assemble piles of round logs alongside a pile of branches and tops. As few as possible of the branches and tops should be in contact with the ground. It is therefore desirable that the harvester attempts to build a pile of branches and tops that is as round and high as possible. In part, this is to minimize the risk that stones and mineral soil follow along with the branches and tops, and in part, to make work more efficient for the forwarder. One successful technique to achieve round piles is that the harvester begins by placing the timber at the center of the round wood collection. Saw logs are then placed on each side of the timber pile and outside these pulpwood and wood fuel. In order to create a large pile of branches and tops, you can allow the harvester operator to drive forward to fell the tree and then reverse back to the pile of branches and tops before delimbing and cutting the trunk. By building large concentrated piles of branch and tops, you can thus increase energy extraction from the forest.